Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I'm getting ready to leave tonight. I got all my gear here. I'm leaving in the middle of the night for an awesome winter trip. And that'll be the video that you're about to watch right after this. But before that, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor for this video, Audible. Thank you very much, Audible, for once again partnering with me and wanting to sponsor a video. It's 2018, right? It's time for a new you, a new year, a new you. Audiobooks can do that for you. Audiobooks can create a new you, a better you, an improved you. So you remember last last video when I was talking at the end about something I wanted to talk to you guys about this trip, or sorry, this video. It's about that. A lot of you know that I have IBS and I've been dealing with it for years now. Um, what you see on video and stuff isn't really my normal life. It's not my day-to-day -day life at home, right? I eat like garbage at home. My wife is a great cook. She cooks three square meals a day. But I snack. I snack so hard and I eat stuff that I shouldn't be eating. So my new me, my resolve, my 2018 new me, better me, is to be a healthier me. It's to be a me where I can deal with living with IBS and not um, just be wasting away. I'm not gaining any weight, as you can tell. I'm a buck 30 soaking wet. I've been like that for about 10 years now. So I want to feel better. I want to feel more energetic. So what I did was I just grabbed my phone, went to Audible, and I, ty and I, ty and I typed in, how to deal with IBS. And this came right up. Curing irritable bowel syndrome, dealing with IBS naturally. So it's by Robert Whitman, narrated by Bob Brinson. So what I'm gonna do is listen to it in the car on the way up to my trip up north. I have about a six hour drive. This book's just over an hour long, so it'll give me um, a good starting point anyway, and then something to consider the whole time I'm out there. Now obviously if you're a healthy person, Audible has tons of different books to make you a better you, or just to be interesting. Um, you could be, maybe you want to be more money smart this year. Maybe you don't want to deal with all sorts of dog hair this year. <laughs> Anything like that. Audible's got a book for you. Audible helps you check out more books. You can switch seamlessly between devices like a tablet, computer, smartphone, all that stuff and it lets you pick up where you left off. The books are hands-free and eyes-free, which allows you to do a lot of things while consuming information. Audible members get a credit every month, good for any audiobook in the store, regardless of price. Unused credits roll over to the next month. If you don't like your audiobook, just exchange it, no questions asked. Your books are yours to keep with Audible. Uh, at any time, you can go back and re-list it, even if you've canceled your membership. So once again, Audible's hooking it up. They're giving you guys, my listeners, my subscribers, a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash robinette. That's audible.com slash r-o-b-i-n-e-t. Browse the unmatched selection, download, and start listening. So once again, go to audible.com slash r-o-b-i-n-e-t. Or if you're in the U.S., you can just text robinette to 500-500. That's r-o-b-i-n-e-t to 500-500. So once again, thank you very much, Audible. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I gotta get ready. I'm gonna leave tonight. Like I said, it's supposed to snow all night and snow all day while I'm camping tomorrow. So uh, fingers crossed, stick along for the video. Here it is, thank you very much. Getting snow on me, bro. How you guys doing? Joe here. I'm up north. I'm finally in a real winter wonderland. This is the first real winter trip of the year for me. I drove all night and all morning to get here. It's 10 in the morning now. I drove through a snowstorm, progressively got colder, colder, and colder as I got farther up north. It's warmed up a little bit right now. It's snowing, it's supposed to snow all day. It's gonna be a snowstorm all day. 100% chance of snow. So the plan for today is going to, it's gonna drop down again tonight. So I wanna get out of the wind, out of the snow. Right now there's not too much wind. My idea is to get to a conifer patch such as cedar, hemlock, pine. That way the snow is gonna be less deep there. It's about two feet in the bush right now. I'll be able to 
clear a spot away, stay away from all the snow that's falling down, stay out overnight, cook a good supper, be really relaxed. I have a surplus backpack sent to me from a subscriber that I'll show you and I have a couple other pieces of gear from a subscriber that's going to be my shelter for tonight. Never used it before but uh, everything will go good. So let's keep on walking. We gotta find an ideal spot. I get a whole lot of questions all the time about tree identification and uses and stuff. The birch tree is very common. Everybody knows that. This is a birch as well. This is a yellow birch. Betula elegansis. A lot of people probably know that as well. You can use this for fire starting just like the, yellow, the white birch. I prefer this because it's very ribbony. And I'll collect a little bit here and bring it back with me. So that yellow birch is in my cargo pocket. Now it has some snow on it. Obviously it's a little bit wet. I'm going to dry it out, warm it up in my pocket. It'll be good to go when I need it. I'm hoping to get to camp and not too... Whoa, big chunks of snow are falling. Get to camp and not too soon, or not too late. And uh, have some good camp time. Have a fire going for a while and stuff. But that's all good. I don't, I don't really care if it takes me a little bit longer. I'm, I'm enjoying hiking. Look at this. Look at this terrain. Big old rock next to me here. Look at that. Freaking awesome terrain. Very rocky. Originally I wanted to camp in a spot where there was a big oh, exposed rock that I could butt up against it and uh, have my fire up against it and stuff as a fire reflector. But more of my concern now is getting out of the snow uh, the, the majority of the snow. I want to get under some conifers like I was saying and uh, not really worry too much about the, the rock for the fire but whoo it's warming up man I'm warming up too oh man talk about snow holy how cool is this I've never, oh, never carried anything on the top of a pack before. It's always been in the bottom. So I'm not used to this extra weight or extra height. <laughs> Decent amount of snow. Oh man. Serious business hiking with his backpack on and these snowshoes. I'm warming up. I don't want to start sweating either, though. Look at all this. Okay, so as you can see, we're dealing with like, I don't know, a foot and a half, two feet of snow here. So I'm pretty excited. I gotta melt some snow tonight. Actually, as we're going, I know they say you're not supposed to eat snow, but I'm not in a survival situation. I do have water and means of warming myself up. So this is gonna be a good little snack as I'm going. It's a little cold though. Woo! Okay. On to the next one. On to the next one, on to the next one. You know what, I stopped there for a second, you know what I realized? It's quiet. There's no trains, there's no planes, there's no automobiles. There's no crazy people yelling, there's no scout crying for fallen trees. Although I could have scout, scout would not be an issue. That snow started to slow down for a minute there. I don't know how much is picking it up in the, in the camera, but man. It's snowing. It is snowing. <laughs> oh man, I wish I would have brought Scout. He would have been loving it here. It's better too because we're actually hiking around for quite a bit. But I do have a winter trip coming up with my canvas tent. So we'll bring him for that one for sure. We'll be able to get him out of the elements and warmed up and thawed out. Yep. 
10 years old, so I don't know how many, how many more years I'll have him. How many more years he'll even be able to get up and go around and do stuff. I always said if I get 12 years out of him, I'll be happy. But now that we're almost there, <laughs> 14 sounds a bit better. But he's doing good. He's doing good still, so that's good. What up, Scout? Oh, oh. I came out to a lake. Pretty decent sized lake. This looks like there's some old snowmobile tracks. Slushed over. I might camp near here. It's kind of nice to have this. If it clears up tonight, maybe I'll be able to get some stars. You got some footprints there. Animal tracks. What is that? Coyote. For the spacing and the size? Maybe. It's been snowed over like crazy. It's hard to tell. This is pretty cool. I might explore this a bit. I want to check the ice to make sure it's still really good first. Oh no, she's slushy. She's super slushy. It's insulated by the snow. Okay. Scratch that. I am going to skirt the edge here to find a suitable spot, but I'll probably do it in the woods. Man, she's coming down. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, this doesn't look like such a bad spot. I feel like if I uh, stomp the snow down, get a relatively flat area. This is a pretty open spot in here, it, within, with, within amongst the, the hemlocks. That's the key, right? Uh, the lake is behind me. I'm going to put a tarp here, blocking the lake. I won't be looking out at it, but that's fine. There's not that good of a view of it anyway. The wind's coming from that way, the snow's coming from that way. I block that with the tarp, I put a tarp down, have a fire in front, build a fire reflector probably. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like it could be home. Let me get this. I gotta stop walking anyways. It's past noon now, and it's only gonna stay light till five. I have lots of camp chores I need to do, like making camp, finding firewood, processing that firewood, all that normal stuff I do. Um, I gotta eat lunch too, actually. Frickin' starving. Yeah, I hope this will hope this will be suitable. I think it will. I looked above. There's nothing like no deadfall hanging or anything. There's uh, one tree leaning, but even if it does go, it's not coming anywhere near me. Not a lot of firewood. Not a lot of firewood in this area. So I'm gonna be having to travel out to the hardwoods uh, to gather that. So it's time to get my gear all set up and. Uh, show you guys what I got. So like I said, this is that LK35. This is a Swedish backpack sent to me from an awesome subscriber from Australia. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have talked to him since through email and stuff. Very cool of him. Um, the surplus stuff I have is surplus, but it's not from Australia. It's sent from Australia though. Hope that makes sense. Okay, sleeping bag. I have a negative 20 Celsius sleeping bag. That is uh, going to be a lifesaver for today. It is snowing like crazy. Oh, my camera. Oh, my poor camera. Okay, so this um, this backpack is a little bit different. It, it has buckles. It has buckles on the bottom, buckles on the top. I, was, I attached that sleeping bag, obviously, to the top of it. And then these buckles are basically just to keep uh, cinch it down. So you can stuff things underneath it, too, on the bottom, like a jacket or another bedroll or whatever. So right off the hop, got a Grants vs. Brooks. Scandinavian forest axe. This is a brand new one. This is some Canadian outdoor equipment where I get all my goodies from. Then up next, we got layers. We got a second set of gloves, like a rubberized pair of gloves. That way, once my uh, my leather ones get all soaked, I'm not kind of screwed. I have my Primloft jacket. That's just as another layer. I have my Fall Raven granite shirt. 
as another layer. All getting covered in snow right now. I gotta get to the, get to the good stuff. This is my food. Nothing fancy. I stopped and got it on the way up. It was all all meat all the time. Ooh, I got another gift from a subscriber. We'll get into that a little bit. Very excited for that one. Come on, where is ya? Where is ya? Okay. Nope. Here we go. This is another thing I got from the same guy from Australia. So this is called a Hus Military Hoochie. I was trying to remember the name of this on the last video. Um, uh, what is it? 5x7x9. And I have two of them. And it's like this, like, almost... I don't know, more durable material. I don't want to say rubberized, but more durable material than my ripstop tarps. So I have two of those. We're going to get that out and cover my gear up with it. That way I'm not going to feel so exposed. Okay, there we go. So tarps are the shelter for today. I'll just go through the rest of the stuff I got with you in a second, but it's just basic stuff. Nothing, uh, nothing too extravagant. I also forgot one more thing. I'm not going to be using paracord this trip. I have this nylon plated dark green 8 strand 2.5 millimeter diameter 1000 and breaking strength uh, cordage that I got from the same generous Aussie <laughs> that sent me the other stuff. So we'll be using this cordage today. I'm going to run a tarp line between these two trees right now. Cut a little bit extra there. This stuff seems to be pretty good quality uh, cordage too. I did a taut line hitch on the other side. And that's the same thing that's going to happen on this side. Surprise, surprise. Two on the inside. One on the outside. I should get a shirt made that says that. Two on the inside, one on the outside. Shirts coming, hey! Shirts are coming, ba bam, son! All right, there we go. See how this works. This tarp's got a bunch of tie-outs all the way along it, and then there's this grommet right in the corner. I feel like that's gonna be my best bet. So I'm gonna take my ridge line, make a bite in it, put it through the grommet. If I can, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so she's through. I'm gonna throw my enormous toggle on there. Normally I clean it up a bunch, but these tarps are durable. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm ready to get off the pokies off of it. Ow. Okay. So that's that, and I'll do it to the other side as well. All right. It's time to attach the back part. Got it. Instead of tacking it down into the snow and using snow anchors, I'm going to try to tie it off to trees behind me. So to do that, I'm going to attach a piece of cord. Easiest way for me to do that, here's your cordage. Just make a little bend in it. Put both, I'm going to use a tab here, put both through, the loop through. Then take the running end and your tail and put it back through the loop you just created. And pull both ends through. Now it's on there, it comes off nice and easy. Luckily there's lots of trees around, and it's not so difficult to find one in the right positioning that I need. And on all of these, whoa, all of these knots are going to be top line hitches. What is it? Two on the inside, one on the outside. You got it. You got it. It's not so bad. All right, that's not looking so bad. Nice and comfy. But with this middle tab here, I believe I can make it a lot more roomy. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull this one up, use our cordage, tie it to a tree as high up as I can. And then we got to see about snapping these two together. Sometimes you're able to snap them together. And if I can do that, uh, can you see this gap here? I can kind of block that gap and make my, my ground uh, sheet all in one. But we'll see. Either way, I, I don't care too much about the gap, but that would be ideal to mind it, you know, to mind the gap. I got my Mora Garberg on this trip. I wanted to use this because I got 
that sheath that I showed you in my last video from One Tree Leather. Got a fire steel from firesteel.com in the little fire steel holster. So it was a nice little setup I wanted to use. All right, let's get this thing tied up. Two on the inside. One on the outside. We got a little, we got a little boogies going on. Oh, pfft. chaos. Man, my camera is getting peppered by snow. The thing's almost frozen. Hmm, I gotta get out of this. This wind real quick okay so uh good good thing good news it does clip in and i'm able to block the back with it i believe let me show you what i've started to do now we're going to snap this thing together like i've been doing tuck it under and it's going to be like a back wall and have zero air going through which is great my problem is these snaps are a little full of snow and ice so i kind of gotta heat them up and Get rid of that snow and ice in there. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing that. This is looking good, man. All right, this is gonna tie it all in really well. Oh yeah, heck yeah. Look at that. Completely blocked. I have a ground sheet that goes out basically to the same um, distance as the top of my tarp. And I don't, obviously I'm going to pull it back some because when I lay on it I don't want it to unsnap the snaps. I might have to flatten this out a little bit more. Oh, it's so cold. So cold on the hands. Oh. Okay, I got plenty of room anyway for me and my gear. I'll sit under here, have my fire in front. Yeah, man, everything's coming up Millhouse. This is pretty sweet. So I will uh, maybe peg it down in the back a bit. Or not even. I'll just put my, my stuff here. It'll hold it down. It'll be fine. I'll get myself out of the snow and have some lunch. I'm very cold. I need to hike around and get some wood and all that stuff because I've been dicking around here for way too long. I'm probably going to leave that in there for a little bit um, in the hopes that it stops snowing because it is the, the snow did change directions and it's coming a little bit in there. I just don't want it to get all full of snow open. Either way, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, okay, my bed will be made up of trusty old Reflectix and my Thermarest NeoAir. Look at the condition my camera is in. This is not just, oh, I don't even know if it shows up. Look at that. It's all iced up anyway. It's not just slow, it's starting to ice up on there. Poor microphone. It's all soaked. <laughs> I hope it comes out all right. I hope the video turns out all right too. Now that I've got my camp all set up on the snow pack down around it, I can take these off for a minute while I go inside my shelter and set it up. But once I start to go hiking around for firewood, 100% have to put these things back on. I got a pair of smaller boots, smaller winter boots, so my um, they only come up to here. So my snowshoes go on and off a lot easier than before. I'll let you know how I feel about them after I've used, used them for a few trips or a season. Oh, <sighs> freeing! It's a freeing feeling 
having no snowshoes on and having my uh, whoa, having my shelter set up. Oh man, I feel like anything could happen now. I'm pretty solid in here. But this is a sweet setup, man. Actually, with these these tarps, the, my favorite thing is the back. Like I have an actual back, all connected. Pretty sweet. I don't know how much these are. I would assume they're relatively um, economical. Okay, lunch. Lunch time. Lunch is a uh, pre-made lunch today. I made it in the car before I got out. Like I said, it was. Uh, I bought everything on the way up. I got a. I got a ribeye. I got a ribeye. And I got lunch. Where's my lunch? Here we go. You guys never seen me eat this before. Oh, bam! Flatbread. Italian... Nope. Flatbread, German salami, and Swiss cheese. The Swiss cheese is actually new. Cheers. Mmm. It's somewhat frozen. Nice. Okay, I did tell you that I would show you everything I brought, so here we go. This is my Hidden Woodsman Possibles pouch. Inside here, like always, I have my camera gear. I've got a charger, I've got batteries, I've got, um, sorry, a charger for my USB, which is my phone or my GoPro. I've got batteries for my DSLR, I've got batteries for my headlamp, uh, extra SD cards, and, um, Cords. Cords. They're supposed to be in there. For my phone and for my GoPro. So I don't get any reception where I am now, but I can still use it, my phone, for um, listening to podcasts, listening to Audible, things like that. I got another Hidden Woodsman pouch with my food in it. What do I have in here? Just randoms. I got hot chocolate. Oh, I got some Dutch coffee, like Jiva Cube coffee. Let's have some of that too. Uh, oatmeal for the morning, we got trail mix, and really, oh, and I have a cup of soup, uh, a cup of soup in there too for uh, an emergency. What I also am going to put in there is my supper. I have potatoes, garlic, onions, and butter and gumballs <laughs> from my daughter right in there with the garlic. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> That's some garlic and a garlic gum for daddy, and my onion. So that's going to go in my food bag as well as my steak is a nice ribeye. I can just stay right on the snow and it stays nice and cool. I do have some snacks like uh, my booze and some um, chocolate covered almonds but nothing too crazy. Not too many snacks. You gotta try to stay healthy. Try to stay healthy right? 2018. This is my uh, first aid kit. It's Inside it, I have things like band-aids, di anti-diarrhea pills, anti-acid anti pills, toothbrush, chapstick, which is super important in the winter time. Let's 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 paste a little on there, right now. Oh yeah, beauty, Joe, beauty. Uh, what else we got in there? Yeah, just stuff like that, basically. Um, ooh, a new thing I picked up: some tweezers. come in handy taking out slivers and ticks and whatnot I don't think I'll get any ticks on this trip though Benadryl stuff like that that's my um, first aid kit I've got one pair of extra socks that's the only clothes I brought is one pair of extra socks to change into tonight I've got my possibles pouch this is a, Fan a Phantom X still nylon possibles pouch and in here I have things like Butt wipe, which is going to go in my pocket right now. Oh, Joe, how are you? How are you dropping the ball? Butt wipe in the pocket to stay warm, so it doesn't freeze, so it's not a bad time when it's time. <laughs> I got some fire starter, fat rope. I got a thermometer. What does it say it is right now? I go to five. I have a headlamp. And I have a lens cleaner cloth, which will be very handy today. Compass, some toothpicks for my mommy. My mommy went to Arizona a while ago, maybe last year. And she got me 
a toothpick holder made of wood, and I kind of like it. Came with some toothpicks. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I like toothpicks. I like them a lot. I like Q-tips, too. Not good for you, but I like them. They're supposedly not good for you. I never have a problem. Okay, that's my Possible's pouch. All, imp all important stuff, really. All, all stuff that I really never go without. I got my Agawa Canyon Boreal 21 saw, which will come in handy. You've already seen my axe, my Grants First Brooks Skin Even Forest axe. I've got my heavy cover titanium canteen. Ah. <coughs> oh, that's icy. <coughs> so I <icy>. see. <coughs> what else? Oh, my grill. My steak spice. That's it. That's all she wrote for the LK35. Inside my grill bag, I have a couple things. I've got my lid for my canteen, and I've got my spork. I can't wait any longer. I'm not even going to put my uh, seating pad up yet. I'm starting to shiver. I'm getting very cold. So I need to uh, move around because I don't want to just throw on my layers and sit. I want to keep keep moving, keep active. It's only got about three hours left of sunlight, so or daylight even, the sun sun. So I've got to get busy, keep moving, because once 5 o'clock comes, there's not going to be much to do but sit in front of that fire. So I need to get a uh, decent amount of firewood here. Uh, So I walked around a little bit already, and I did see a nice, big, dead, standing piece of dry wood. So I'm going to go get her right now. Here she is. Get it with my axe. Look at this beauty. It's maple. It's decent. That's going to be a lot of wood for me, which is perfect. And then there's another dead, there's a hemlock right there, a skinny one. See no top on it. Get to chop and warm myself up. I don't even think it's connected at the bottom. I think it fell. Well, she's nice and dry season too. I might be able to just pull it down. It's not really a point of chopping it if it's not connected. I'm just losing wood that way. Never fun to lose wood. No, I can't move that thing. Okay, split it in half lengthways. Woo! Yeah, boy. Holy 
crap. That was trouble. A little bit of trouble. And you know, in the winter, firewood warms you four times. Oh, man. I'm out of shape, guys. Out of shape. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's that one tree, and while that's pretty decent, that's not going to last uh, for as long as I need it to, even though a lot of those are pretty uh, substantial. So I'll have to find more. On my way by, I pushed this old birch tree over. It's just this little piece of it, but I can probably use it as a piece of my fire reflector. I don't need anything solid, just dead, preferably wet, and this is about perfect. So I'm going to leave this right here. So when I walk back by on my trail to my shelter, I'll be able to find it. All right, I found a really, really good one. It's freaking big, though. She's big, but I think I'm gonna take it, and then between that and the other tree, there should be plenty of wood for me. Nice big pieces, too. I want to fall it that way. It's the most open that way, so if I do it properly, it should work out all right. What I'm going to do is saw a V-notch on this side where I want it to fall. And then once I have that V-notch sawn out, I'm going to come at it straight from the back end and have it fall over. I just cut it from the back side and if everything works out she topples this away bam son timber that was a boot perfect right there Why am I so excited? Why am I so excited about that? <laughs> I'm having fun, guys. I'm having fun. All right, now to cut that bad boy up. All right, that's a decent amount of wood. I'm almost satisfied with it. We'll probably get some more soon, but uh. A lot of those are really big pieces. So I think I'm gonna start working on my fire reflector. I'm not gonna try to pound stakes into the ground, but instead just pile old stumps, like old half trees and bir birches and just stuff I find kicking around, pile that up behind it like this. Let's go right here. This might be more of a, a balsam fir it looks like from here, but maybe a yellow birch stump. 
and by stump it's like four feet long. So right here, yeah, this isn't this is another birch. I'll saw it as low as I can. It'll be super easy to saw through. And I'm gonna try my oh I see another one right there too. And that's what our, our fire reflector will be. That's what we'll try to make our fire reflector as at least. Okay, that was really easy. It's a bit on the short side, but it'll help. It will help, especially after all this birch bark catches on fire. <laughs> Derp. We'll be delicate with these guys. Man, she's coming in. She's getting crashed on by big old snow clumps. That's the lake out there. Oh yeah, that wind is lovely, lovely. The wild GoPro. I'm gonna attempt to set up my fire reflector now. I went over to the first tree I fell and I was right, it wasn't attached in the ground, but these were sticking in the ground big time. And when I split it lengthways like it did, these ones stayed behind. Uh, I went over and got them to use as supports for my fire reflector. So I'll be, I'm going to be sitting right here. I want it a decent foot away from where I'm sitting. Actually, not even that decent because I can tuck back in there with my sleeping stuff. I do kind of want to be close to the fire. So just a normal step. But right there is where I want to have my fire. Meaning, I want my fire reflector just to set a little bit back from that. Maybe right here. Just mark my spots. So, I'm going to put these in on an angle. I hope they stay. They'll pack snow around them, I guess. Do you hear this? Do you see all this coming down? This is insane. Maybe I'll prop them up too in the back, I guess. I'll have to do that. Prop both of them up in the back with some a log. Yeah, that's what I have to do. I'm lucky to find these little broken off birch stumps or whatever you want to call them everywhere. They're very useful, I'm finding. So, get that into there. Get that there. And that's going to stay for the most part by itself. And then once I get these on there, This will hold it up in the front. Oh man, it's coming down. I might have to prop this up a little bit straighter after this last one. But that's not so bad, guys, really. That's a pretty decent fire reflector really quick. Come around and show you. That's not so bad. Simple little setup. You can see the distance between. So my fire's gonna be close enough to that fire reflector where it actually might catch on fire, but I'm not concerned about it. Look what's around, nothing. And that wood is like soaking, soaking wet. So the only thing that'll catch is the bark at first. Uh, after all night, maybe it's a different story, but who knows. I'm not worried about it. It's far enough where I'm gonna stay warm and that's all I care about. Now I'm not relying on the fire for warmth when I'm in, in bed. My sleeping bag, my negative 20 sleeping bag is gonna do more than fine for me tonight. It's not gonna get down that cold, but while I'm hanging out by the fire from like 5 o'clock till 10, uh, 5 hours, I want to be warm. Doing lots, doing lots. I gotta cut up my firewood now, I believe. Look at all that. All that firewood.
alright. The wood inside is not the greatest now that I split it. Oh, perfect. It's frozen on one side. So, this is uh, the inside of the one of the pieces of wood. You can see over here, the grain is really not even there. It's almost punk. On this side, it's different. But, I'm going to put my lips to. This side feels dry. This side feels soaking wet. Well, yeah, clean it up a bit. There's, look at that. You see how easy it comes off? It's not even like grain anymore. Anyways, I guess I'll just wait till later on to throw that on when the fire is nice and good. That sucks. I might have to go get some more wood. I got a lot, but I'm cutting it up now. I'm, I'm bucking it up to the size I need it to be for burning. And uh, yeah, it's not looking like as much as it was. And I really should be getting double that anyways, triple the, of what I think anyways. But again, it's only for about five hours I need. And this long piece right here that I'm working on is super dry. So this is that one that I split when I was getting it down the first time. So you can see there, it even, it's loose. I want to put something underneath it. Yeah, that is some dry, solid wood here. Very, very nice wood. Huh. I'm all done, as you can see. Lots and lots of work cutting that wood up. Time to start this fire. I, uh, I'm getting chilled, and I gotta get a good base going so I can cook my, my dinner. So I got a brand new firesteel.com. Fire steel sets fire to the snow. <laughs> And, oh, remember the, the birch bark we grabbed earlier. So we've got that super fine yellow birch bark. We're just going to fluff it up as much as we can. It's nice and dry and warm, actually, for my pocket. So that'll, that should go up relatively easily. I have hemlock kindling. I also have... Some shavings, some big fat shavings I made out of the maple. And then I have my small fuel pieces. So, here we go. Everything goes away. There's this log behind it now. I left a big, like, good log behind it, not one for the fire reflector. I'm going to use it as my brace, and then I'll let that catch on fire too and have that as my back log for my long fire. Listen to this. Help me! What the heck is that? I've heard some weird things coming out of fires and seen some stuff coming out of fires, but that is accelerating quite a bit, actually. Draw a bucket down! <laughs> look at this. Look at my camp. 
Look at how sweet that looks against the white. Ba bam, son. I better take a thumbnail picture. It's important, you know, a little thumbnail picture. I can hear it from over here. Listen. Now, obviously, in all reality, it's probably some moisture or something just like, you know, like boiling out of the wood or whatever, but I've never heard it do that before. Pew, 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 pew. Man, that noise is disturbing. You know what I was thinking it might be, which it probably isn't, is pine beetles in there just like slowly boiling, but slowly roasting to death. But I don't think so. None of this is pine anyway. And they'd be dead by now. <laughs> All good. Oh, the snow has slowed down finally. It's almost supper time. I'm pretty hungry. Maybe I will prepare my uh, potatoes and stuff. I gotta let these coals die down quite a bit. It looks a lot brighter in the in the camera than it actually is. Oh my! Oops. Let's see if I can fix this. My exposure is actually up quite a bit. Oh, way too much. Way up. Mm, there, there, that looks more accurate representation. Yep. Try and dry off my knees and my butt, wherever I was touching the snow is a little wet now. You see that steam coming off, oh there it is, yeah. Gloves are soaking wet, so I need to dry them off a bit. That's not a bad spot for them. All right, I'm parched. Ran out of water long ago, so I'm my canteen cup and grab some snow. Boiler up. Snow. It's what's for dinner. Not really. We got good steak. i have to use my gloves to get that off of there. So you saw what I did with that snow. I didn't pack it in or anything. I just took a couple scoops, put it on the fire. We'll see how much water that actually gets me. I'm guessing like two tablespoons tops. And then I'll actually start to add uh, snow on top of that water, which will go a lot faster. A lot of the times I'll pour water even on top of the snow, water that I already have on top of the snow before I melt it just to get the process going a lot quicker. But I don't have that luxury right now. There we go. Ah, sorry, a little foggy on the lens. Oh, it's more than two tablespoons of water. I probably got, I don't know, a quarter cup of water there and a bunch of debris, a bunch of leaf litter, as it were. That's all right. So that's what we got. That's a decent amount of water for that little bit of snow, actually. I'm not even trying. So now, this is what I'll do. Because I can't obviously scoop and lose my water. Got my lid. Just gonna help some snow get into there with my lid. Now it's like slushy in there. Pack it down a bit. Now I'll try to get as much in as I can, and then if you use the lid, that helps too, obviously. Speed the process up. Whoa! 
just in time or I caused that, either one. Ah. All right, We've got basically a cup of water here. There's a little chunk of ice in there still. But that's a good cup of water. So, now we leave that on to get boiled and uh, make up a coffee, a coffee. Make up a coffee while I'm waiting to cook my supper. Well, nothing left to do now but wait for full dark cook my supper. I am very hungry. I'm going all day. I had that early lunch, well not early lunch, I had that small lunch earlier that you saw. And I've had a little bit of trail mix since then. So this steak and potatoes and garlic will go very nice. And gumballs. Don't forget the gumballs. Thanks, Emmy. She's getting big, man. She's turning six. So part of the reason I uh, only came up for one night is to check this place out, but I have to be back for my daughter's birthday. So her birthday's in a few days. Actually, in two days. And we're having a family thing all day, me, her, and my wife. And then on the weekend, we've got a swimming pool reserved for her for her birthday party. So that'll be lots of fun. She's turning six, like I said. She she is a lot of fun these days. I got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas. And we've been playing Mario Odyssey quite a lot together. So it's pretty cool. It's our first like video game thing we're doing together. I used to have like I still do have a PlayStation, but I don't want to play like war games in front of her or anything like that. So this is good for the whole family. And, uh, yeah, it's fun. You know, a lot of times we go outside and stuff, but I think she's getting sick of that. I don't want to push it on her. I don't want to make her overly used to doing outdoor things and get burnt out on it early on in life. So having um, other options, such as playing a Nintendo Switch with her, is good. I like it. We're on to the, gar the garlic. Under the garlic now. Pass the potatoes under the garlic. Ah, I have a uh, pretty cool trip coming up in March. I'm supposed to go back to Woodland Caribou, where Sean and I went in the spring. And do the winter trip there, which will be pretty epic. I was told by Harlan that the possibility of me seeing... Because I'll take a float plane in again, right? But the possibility of me seeing a moose dead on the ice or a caribou dead on the ice from wolf, like a wolf kill, is a high probability of that. So that would be freaking sweet. This is a pretty cool trip. I, I like this. This is a, a fun time. I'm having a fun time. I, uh, yeah, I am. I'm having a really good time, actually. It's, I, I'm sick and tired of going out around my house, guys. I'm burned out on it. I'm just being totally honest with you. It's like, I love to come up and go to new places and camp and, and see new things and stuff. Where I'm at around my place, it's, I'm burnt out on it. And that, my last few videos was around my house. I didn't really travel too far for the um, the holidays. I was at home spending time with the family, which is good. But now that that's all over, I get back hard into the swing of things, traveling, going to places I've not been, having exciting trips. That butter is solid. Yeah, so that's my, uh, my thinking anyway. Put another small little little potato in there, a little patat. Kind of frozen. <laughs> Good amount of food. Get another garlic in there and some butter and we'll call it good. Alright, I got my little hobo dinner wrapped up. It's always a good idea if you can to double wrap it. You don't know where it's been. Wrap it up so it doesn't burn. That's good to go on the coals for a good 25 minutes, maybe a half an hour, depending. 
but 20 to 25 minutes on this fire, I think. Okay. Nice and flat. You want it flat, as flat as possible. That way it cooks evenly, as opposed to bulbous, like a Jiffy Pop. You know? Look at that. Look at that cup of joe. Let's have a sip. I haven't had a sip yet. Cup of joe. Never understood that. Never got it. Cheers, guys. This is really good. Mm. Putting it on a log here so it doesn't lose its warmth through the bottom. Somebody wants cold Joe. I don't want cold Joe. My fire reflector is not going to last too long. That's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody wants a cold butt. I want that CBS, that cold butt syndrome. <laughs> oh, man. I'm super hungry. This fire is toasty, man. Like, there's a super good bed of coals. The fire reflector didn't catch on fire, didn't continue to burn. The bark burned off, and now it's fine. It's all rotted and smoldering. But the, uh, yeah, the fire's kicking out the heat, man. Like, really, really good. I'm not cold at all. This is perfect. And even though it's super windy right behind me, that uh, tarp shelter with that back wall there. Boom, son. Boom and bam, son. Tuck down in there. There's no wind at all. Man, it's super windy out there. Good. Hello. Okay, so I teased you guys with this a little bit earlier. Let's check her out now. This is... Oh, I would imagine that's how you say it. And then it says Tong Tenever. T O N G T E N E V E R, I think. Um, I got this from a subscriber, actually, a family of subscribers from the Netherlands, which is pretty sweet. I have a, a note from here from them. I got this box a long time ago, so thank you very much, you guys. Um, all of the things that you sent. So let's let's read it. Uh, without giving the names because I don't know if they want to. Really like your videos. Helped enjoy the outdoors and build shelters and fires with our five-year-old daughter, which is really cool. Um, love the country, but watching the scenery in Canada is breathtaking. Wanted to send me some gifts. This is called Dutch Oath. So this is Dutch gin. Commonly served very cold and drunk with beer as a chaser. Oh, I don't have a beer. Then is referred to as a headbutt. Give it a try. Well, I won't. Uh, I won't drink all of this tonight, so I'll be able to have that later on at home. I don't really drink the booze at home. I'll have a beer every now and then, but oh, and they sent uh, clogs, wooden shoes for Emerald that she's been wearing around the house for a long time now. So thank you very much, guys. You know who you are. I don't want to say names, but I, I really appreciate it. I got some stuff into my stomach. I ate a pepperoni and a handful of jerky. I mean jerky trail mix because I'm waiting for this to die down so let's try a little nip a little nip of this Dutch gin oh it smells decent that smells decent all right pops up oh Wow, this will be dangerous. <laughs> That's drinkable. I don't know if it's because it's cold. He said in the note, it's served cold commonly. That's decent, thank you. Wow, that's dangerous. Good thing it's only 35%. Okay, so we'll save some more of that for after supper. Definitely not gonna drink the whole thing. Um, yeah, wow, I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Oh, and they sent me these waffles, these stupid, stupid waffle, and they were like, uh, 
like a cookie pastry thing. Very good, anyways. Very good. Those are all gone by now. <laughs> oh, you guys are good to me. I have good subscribers. I appreciate it. I have uh, lots of things coming in all the time, and it's very cool. This is this is very warm. I'm, I'm getting hot. Snow has stopped for now. This, the wind is still kicking up like crazy, and there's no sign of uh, clear sky tonight at all. It's all just white. So my chances of getting a um, starry night are slim to nil, but that's okay. That's okay. It's nice to have the lake near me, even though it's windy. It's just like a cool little bonus thing. Camping by the lake in the winter, you know? I have a video of myself and Kyle, buddy Kyle. Um, maybe, well, it's got to be... I don't know, four years, three or four years ago. And we did a winter camp. We had planned it. Kyle's from Ohio, if you didn't know. And uh, we did a, used to do a lot of trips together and stuff. We planned a winter camp to Algonquin Park for four nights. And we were going to travel and move every day. And we had sleds. And now there's a video of it on my channel. We had sleds and everything. And we are going. We booked the time and we went. You know what I mean? Uh, it wasn't any kind of changing the plans or anything. So... <laughs> Like a couple of days before, we, we check out the weather, and it's like at an all-time low. The whole time we were there, we ended up bailing a day early. We stayed three nights as opposed to four nights, to the best of my recollection, because we found, we found a cabin on the last night and cranked that wood stove in there really hot. But it never got higher than negative 20 Celsius in the day before the wind chill, and at night it was down to negative 40 every night. And we were moving around every... Every day, all day, going from camp to camp, snowshoeing uh, with pulks behind us. It was a rough trip, man. It was really, really cold. The The cameras didn't want to work right. Our fingers, our hands were all messed up. I was using the Go Light Shangri-La, like the hardest thing to set up in the winter time. <laughs> wow. There's a lot, of, big puddle of water underneath my fire now, as you can imagine from the snow. <laughs> Anyways, check that video out. I'll try to link it here. It's uh, That's a real winter trip, man. Like, that was cold, cold, cold. This is decent temperatures. That was cold. That was Kyle, one of Kyle's first, like, real experiences winter camping, too. And he had these, like, little mountaineering snowshoes. And Kyle's got some weight on him, too, compared to me. And he had his, his he's not fat by any means, but he's got some, his bulk on him. And his snowshoes are, like, a quarter the size of mine. <laughs> and he's just sinking the whole time. So I had to... Oh, man. We, we tried to take turns breaking trail, but I ended up having to break the trail because his stupid little snowshoes couldn't handle it. But that was... Oh, and so it was a give and take on that on that trip. I, I didn't put this in the video, but I swear to God this happened. We were on the second night, and we had walked for two days. We were cold. Our sleeping bags were damp already, whatever. And we get to a campsite that was okay. It was We were both arguing about where to camp or whatever. And... Uh, <laughs> And because we were walking all day and I had my big boots on, my feet were sweating and my feet were wet. So we stopped. They got really cold. The insulation in my boots were done at that point. Um, and we were waiting till 5 to start the fire because we only had thin logs and not many of them. And we didn't want to waste our, our warmth, our firewood, our hangout time by the fire. Uh, so we waited till 5. So for about an hour and a half, two hours, we stood there doing nothing. We had everything set up with the fire co wood collected. Everything was done, ready to go. Nothing to do. And my foot got so bad. I had like frost nip, not frost bite, but frost nip on my toe. And I was doing jumping jacks. Nothing would help. I just needed the fire and it wasn't time to start it yet. So Kyle was like, screw it, man. I'm like, what? He's like, just stick it in my armpit. I'm like, what? And he's like, yep. He's like, it'll work. I know it. I'm like, all right. So <laughs> we, we both sit down. I get all like laid out on, on like uh, my, my sitting pad and everything. And he pulls his collar out, take my foot out of my boot and my, my sock. I stick my foot in his armpit and he clamps down on it. We just sit there <laughs> for an awkward amount of time staring into each other. No, we didn't stare into each other's eyes. But, uh, yeah, yeah, what a good guy. What a good buddy, Kyle. So, yes, I broke the trail for him, but he saved my feet, saved my little toesies from, from getting frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, the stuff you do, man, when you need to. So yeah, the third night we found a cabin, and this this cabin had um, a wood stove in it. It was like a big old barrel 
turn on its side and the cabin was not big maybe 10 by 12 I don't even know not big all full of mouse poop and dank but we came across it we were like oh it was like a Shangri-La not the tent uh, so yeah we posted up there and we would cut down trees like got that thing roasting man it was like we had get a thermometer outside it was like negative like 38 or negative 42 and inside it was I don't know man close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit hot 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 we were in our boxer shorts and our uh, t-shirts eating like this jambalaya of like all the extra food because we bailed a day early right so we had like extra I had like extra sausages and he had extra chili and stuff it was just this big mess <laughs> Oh, and then I had to poo in the middle of the night at negative 40, which was good. <laughs> good times, man. I miss that guy. He moved out to California, for you guys who don't know. I went out and, and visited him this summer, but yeah. He was a good tripping partner, for sure. Good canoe tripping, good winter tripping. Not afraid to yell at each other, which is, I think, necessary, honestly. My eyes are a little bit, a little bit smoked out. What's going on? There we are. Just like the booze, guys, I don't eat it like this at home. You know what I mean? It's, uh, this is a camping thing. A lot of the time, all you see is me camping, right? So you don't really see how I normally am, how what my normal life is. It's just a camping, and the camping is... is is a vacation, right? It's a it's a fun time. So I do a lot of fun things while I'm camping, i.e. drinking good craft beer, eating good steak, hanging with good friends, blah, blah, blah. At home, I don't really do many of those things except for drinking the craft beer. Maybe, I don't know, twice a week, three times a week. I was thinking, and actually my wife suggested it, I was saying that I want to branch out and try to do a little bit different videos and stuff, but I know you guys are my audience and, and, and you do like this style of thing, but she was saying just add extra videos. I was wondering what you thought about that. Like for example, I still put up my normal trip videos every Friday, but maybe on Wednesdays I'll upload something just about me talking, maybe at home, maybe with my kid or with my wife. Um, yeah, just like a different style video, not not a camping, why can't I get in focus here? Not a camping video, a different style video, just talking about whatever, current events, what's going on with my life, maybe even like a pod, excuse me, a podcast format where I just talk about like a subject. Obviously it wouldn't take away from my camping, wouldn't take away from my, my regular uploads um, at all. So it would just be bonus. And it probably wouldn't be every week either, just whenever I felt like it. But what do you think about that? Let me know what you think about that for real. I, I, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a question. It's a question that I have. That's about ready, I'd say. Woo! Yeah, that'll do. I mean, a steak boy. Oh, that should be good. Very good. Nice. You see my path I've been making? My shoes and my boots. Just wanted to see what the camp looked like from over here. Oh, it's windy, man. It's so windy. Very happy to have my shelter. Imagine you were lost. Imagine this was a survival situation. You don't have anything. You should have what you have on you, like a space blanket and stuff, but still, it's not fun. That's not a good time. You go as far as to say survival sucks. <laughs> Look at that. Inviting fire. Inviting pack of pile of wood. Pack of wood. So my sleeping bag, normally I set it up right away to loft it out, and I told you earlier why I wasn't doing it today, but now it's a nice backrest. I can actually lean up against it, so I will wait until I go to bed. Oh, buddy. Wow, that looks good. A little burn. 
on the ends too, which is good for the fat. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so smoky, so smoky. This has been sitting for a minute. It smells phenomenal. I'm gonna cut into her and see. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can, okay. Woo, I got my potatoes too. Okay, everything's cooled down a bit. So I got a couple logs in front of me. I can set, I don't know if you can see this. That's why I'm narrating what I'm doing. I can set my uh, steak on. Where are we? There you go. See that? On the grill, on the logs still, so it's not getting cold. Oh, buddy, look at that. That's all right, eh? Mmm, that's tender. That's tender, boy. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's good steak. I wish I had a beer. Bam Sun. Look at those. Oh my. Where's that spark at? Give me that spark. Motor spork. Put that thing in spork. Get a little bit of onion and garlic and potato for the first bite. You see that, can't you? Whoa, my tinfoil is blowing away. Get over here. Cheers. Face my fears. Gave my mama too. Oh, that's really good. Oh man, I would kill for a beer right now. This is about the perfect time for one. Maybe like a lake effect. Lake effect from Great Lakes. Oh, I did a podcast a while back uh, with a guy on in Toronto named the Urban Outdoorsman. I think the podcast is called Urban the Ur, the Urban Outdoorsman. Anyways, he sent me a bunch of craft beer from Toronto, which was very nice of him. Well, thank you if you're watching, and go check that uh, podcast out. I don't know where you can, but check out the Urban Outdoorsman. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Well, I'm pretty stoked on this dinner. The uh, steak is on point. The potatoes aren't burnt at all. Look at this. Can you see that? Wish I had some Salt Bay action to go on that. Mmm. Supper's done. Nice and full now. I gotta fix the fire. Ah, she's a bit smoky, guys, if I'm being honest. Oh, okay. I need to melt some water, or, yep, melt some snow for water because I'm dehydrated. Use the microphone shadow. So my plan is to fill this up, leaving leaving a little bit of water in the can in the cup itself every time, so that melting snow is easier. I'm just gonna leave a little bit in there. Okay, that's about there. Maybe. 
two more times and I'll have more than enough and then I can make a hot chocolate with the, the excess. <clears throat> Bonus! Let me show you something about this canteen cup that I'm really liking. I've noticed it on the past few uh, campouts. It comes time to like, you know, melt snow or boil water or whatever you have to do to heat up water in your cup. It just kind of, the handles just kind of make it stand. You know what I mean? As long as you have something to prop it up against, like, it's pretty, pretty good. Look at that, man. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Anyways, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, it's time. It's time. It's Vader time. Time for my light to get dim. Get dim. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, apparently. There we go. Alright, it's time. Smoky time. Holy crow. Holy crow. That was the saying my nan used to say, I think. Cheers. It was a bigger sip than last time. That's good stuff. That really, really tastes like, like a hint of berries, like no alcohol, no alcohol taste. Cop Amsterdam, post bus, 1591, I'm saying that wrong. 1000 BN, BN, Amsterdam. 0 0.2 liters, maybe I will drink all this. I thought it was more. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. It's really nice. It's smooth. <clears throat> okay. Water duty again. I've already been sipping out of this, too. It's so, like, you can taste that it's it's melted snow. It's not normal water. You can. It's got that smoky, melted snow taste to it. There you go. I have to be careful. I just noticed... My Mora Garberg that I'm have on my dangler here, the pommel is exposed, and it's actually kind of sharp. And I reach reach down and I touched it. I'm like, oh, I don't want to pop my sleeping pad with that. So it's something to think of anyway. Just being careful now. I got my hat underneath it, and I'm trying to be stay off of it because if I sat on that on top of the pad, that would be it. I believe and that would be a bad time. Not a fun night. I'm getting there. But <laughs> what else am I doing, right? <laughs> this is winter camping, right? Gets dark early. You sit around, melt snow for water. <sighs> it's a lot better with other people, though. That's the truth. The truth. Bye bye. -am. Okay, this should be the last one. So, this has taken a while, and it's, it's a lot, and, and I'm only one person for one night. Just something to keep in mind. On the other hand, I only do have this one cook set. Some people bring like multiple, you can get a bunch going at the same time. Bigger pots are easier, have a, a pot going of water the whole time, but. This is working just fine for me. Okay, so that's full now. Completely full. It's nice and warm. I'll just pour a, uh, pour a little bit back in. Get some snow. Boil that up. And have myself a ch hot chocolate. Not a chocolate milk. A hot chocolate. So I'm happy to have that um, canteen full of water. I'll probably end up tomorrow morning just eating bars for uh, breakfast like I normally do. So I gotta get out here and get a long drive home and stuff. But that canteen full of water will get me to the car. There's a two hour hike to get into here. So tomorrow I will need that. I didn't drink half as much as I should have today coming in. But um, 
I'm gonna drink this full thing full of hot chocolate. Probably have a few more sips of that tonight. Maybe even top it off again. But I need to have a full one for the hike out, I know that. I have a Powerade in my car that I completely forgot. I wanted to bring it for a pee bottle too. So this is a hack. This is a real deal hack. You've probably heard me talk about this before, but in the middle of the winter, you know, it's freezing cold at night. Nobody wants to crawl out of their sleeping bag. It's a legit thing I do. I bring a wide mouth uh, Nalgene uh, Gatorade bottle or something like that. Wide mouth because you don't want to it's just spray back at you, <laughs> at you. But yeah, you just, and uh, ease of use. You pee in it inside your sleeping bag. I'm so small that I can almost get up on my knees inside my sleeping bag, almost, and pee in it that way. If not, roll over to your side and, uh, and pee in it, and then you don't have to get up at all. And if you use a dedicated Nalgene for it, you can use that Nalgene to put boiling hot water in before you go to bed. Put that in your in your sleeping bag as like a hot um, hot water bottle kind of thing, obviously. <laughs> Keep you warm. Middle of the night, you have to pee. Pull that thing out. Dump half of it out or the full thing out. Pee in that. And then you could either... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is real talk. You can even throw it back down into your feet because uh, it's warm again, or you can just put it next to you. Uh, I don't ever, I don't, I don't do that. But. Yeah, I, honestly, it's it's what it is, man. You know what I mean? You're out here, you're camping. You stay, you gotta stay warm. You don't want to get out of bed. You want to pee. So, especially if you're sleeping in a Quincy or an igloo or something along those lines, you don't want to slide out of that thing on your in your pajamas or whatever you're wearing. Uh, or put something on to have to get out to go pee. There's no way. There is no way. Show us like there is no way. Oh, add more snow. One handed and everything. Look at that. I'm gonna have to move this fire soon. Fix it, I mean, not move it. Fix it. Look at that. It's almost all. It's almost all water already. Ba bam! Here's my hot chocolate. We got After Eight hot chocolate, one of my favorites. I like the mint. I like the mint chocolate. I got a spork. I do. See this titanium? It cools down relatively quick. I can touch the handles now. The hot chocolate inside is I'm sure super hot still. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. You ever watch, anybody watch King of the Hill? <laughs> King of the Hill used to be my favorite animated uh, show. Oh yeah, Peggy. <laughs> she was the worst character ever. Absolutely hated her. The Boggle Champion. Okay. Nice. Mm, I can smell the mint. Can smell the mint from here. Hey, cheers, guys. Too toasty. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's too hot to drink still. Maybe I should put it on the snow. What's to come? What's to come of 2018, huh? 2017 was crazy year for me. I don't know that I can top it, to be honest with you. Like I alluded to earlier, I'm going to have some shirts ready soon. I, we've designed them. They're just uh, getting ready to come out. And I've made sure that they're, that they're good quality. I've got small, medium, large, and extra large sent to my house. I wore them before washing them. I wore them after wa after washing them. They only shrunk a tiny bit. They're a 60/40 poly cotton blend. Don't quote me on 60/40. Might be 50/50, but I believe it's 60/40. Uh, the small and the medium both fit me perfectly. Um, 
they don't go wider they just basically go a bit longer so I'll have those up in a couple different color options soon I don't want to give away what it is but you guys will like it I'm sure the the design so I'll point you in the direction where you can get those I don't I believe the way we're gonna do it is they're going to sell it through their website the the shirt maker the the company and they'll take orders once a week and ship them out themselves and stuff so I'm not gonna even touch them at all which is ideal for me shipping from Canada is a nightmare to the states that is and to the world but <laughs> mostly to the states I want to do a family camp if I can in my snow trucker tent bring the whole family including scout for a night or two do something like this actually come into a place like this hike in for about an hour maybe not not quite as far as this and just because I got the kid and stuff she's got her own pair of snowshoes and she's got uh, all her own gear which is pretty cool Oh man, it's getting to be bedtime. Oh. It's 9 o'clock. Stay up for another hour. Can't justify going to bed before 10, really. Wow, that fire is lighting it up, man. Look at that. You can shut off my, my headlamp completely. Very cool. I love it when I can film with the fire uh, firelight. By the light of the fire, as it were. Should I take a... Let's take a gin... Let's take a gin shot with a hot chocolate chaser. Cheers. Ooh, that one tasted like pears. Like pears. Not quite like a beer chaser. <laughs> oh, that's a strange taste together. So my footwear on this trip is different than I've ever done on a winter trip before. Um, if you watch my videos, uh, not only will you have seen it, but I talked about it in the Christmas idea, gift idea video. Um, I always wore ba like big old baffins, like almost up to my knee pack boots. I had two sets of them, two pairs of them over the years. My first pair lasted me seven years, and I bought them in Sault Ste. Marie. But what I'm finding, and I bought them anyway, so I bought a new pair a couple years ago, and they're enormous. They're hard to get into my snowshoe bindings and make it heavy to walk. They're so heavy. It, it just make it hard to walk, and uh, I don't want to do that anymore. So this trip, I went with gaiters and small boots. The gaiters are from Mech. I've had them for a while now. I barely ever wear them, but this is perfect for them. They cinch up here. They go underneath the boot like gaiters do. And then they cover it all. The boots only goes up. The boots only go up to here, which is like just past my ankle. These are bathins as well, but they're again just like hikers. They're winter hikers, and they're lightweight. So again, I don't know what my feelings are about them. I, I'm liking them so far, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how. It, how it goes in the long run but this system is working I think it's easy to get my snowshoes on and off these boots even have like a little gator um, clip but my gator clip is too big for it which is kind of a weird thing you'd think that it would fit I just want my gator clip to go in the gator clip but can I just give you this money and buy these shoes? I just want to buy these shoes. Could I just like give you this money? Maybe like you could give me the shoes. Doesn't work that way. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, liking it so far. At first they were tight, and um, my feet were getting smushed up into there, and I was afraid that it was going to not be too warm because of that but they've really like stretched out the insulation has like formed inside so my feet have like wiggle room my toes have wiggle room which is good they've been warm all day 
which is nice because I have, I have cold feeties, little, little cold toesies. It's almost bedtime. Might as well, might as well finish her off. Probably in two more swigs. Cheers. It's getting less, less and less smooth. <laughs> Normally it's the other way around. <laughs> oh, nice and warm. I am like super toasty here. I'm all dry. Everything's good. Like, couldn't be warmer. This fire is, uh, oh, it's raging. It's creating a, it's creating a little lake underneath it too. See what I mean? But <laughs> we're far enough away. All right, that's all she wrote. Get rid of my toothpick. Cheers, guys. It's nighttime after this. Bedtime. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna roll my uh, sleeping bag out. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. Remember when I said I wasn't gonna drink this whole thing? It's really not that much, to be honest with you. I'm not exaggerating, I swear. The sleeping bag is synthetic, not down, but it's nice and warm. I think I'm gonna sleep with my head on this side, over here. Stay away from the wind as much as possible. That's my last load of firewood for tonight. It's a big old pile. I got nothing for tomorrow except for three in case I do want to um, make my oatmeal. So I had a sweater, a half merino uh, undershirt, a full merino undershirt, and then a beater right next to my skin. So I want to take off that, sleep in my long johns, um, and my beater, and my, and my merino. Oh, it's smoking up in here. I'm gonna put my socks, I'm not even gonna put, change my, uh, put socks on. I'm just gonna keep my feet bare, and if I need to put socks on, I will in the middle of the night. But I'm gonna put the socks that I wore today in my sleeping bag to kind of dry them out a bit. They're not overly wet, but definitely have some residual sweat ness on them. Ness. I'm using my trim loft that I didn't use at all today as a pillow. Oh, 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 it's, it's, oh, oh, cold. It's cold at first. It's cold at first till it warms up. Oh, those socks in here. I'm on kind of a little angle, so I'm gonna prop my. Uh, backpack up next to me here, so I don't fall into the fire, which is <laughs> uh, probably important. Uh, all right, guys, that's it for me tonight. This is gonna be my my cocoon of warmth. I'll get with you guys in the morning. Sweet dreams and think warm thoughts for me. Good night. Man, it is coming down like crazy right now. That's all I can hear on the tarp. I'm nice and warm in here though. That fire's almost done. I'm about ready to sleep. morning. Seven o'clock in the morning. I slept pretty well. I actually didn't end up falling asleep till 11.30. I laid here till 11.30. Slept till five. Got up to pee. Slept till 6.30. I 
and then couldn't stay in bed any longer. My um, my fire is completely out and it's soaking wet. The ashes are soaking wet. I believe it drew up the water from the ground. Either that or it just snowed so much last night that it it soaked it all. I'm not sure, but either way, it's it's drenched. I am starving. I do want to have oatmeal this morning, so I'm going to split up some pieces that I left last night. I'm going to uh, try to make a little base out of the, the remainder of the logs left over, but I'm pretty chilled. Um, the water's not frozen. It's slush, though. Ah! Oh, that was painful. Okay. I stayed nice and warm, though. Nice and warm in bed. <clears throat> it's time to get up. It's time to get up. Ah. Yeah, it's absolutely drenched. It's got to be that the water was drawn up from the ground. Because this, these other stuff, the tops of this other stuff's not wet. So I'll just try to light my fire right on top of these old burnt end pieces, these old doggies. Ah, starting to get a little bit light out. Get rid of this headlamp soon. Oh, my hands. My gloves are frozen solid. Oh, I do have that secondary rubber pair of gloves, too. I forgot about They're all the way away in my backpack, though. Nobody got time for that. Ah, I'm starving. So I've got my split up stuff here, some big shavings and some uh, like pencil size, uh, even fuel size pieces. I'm just going to take a bunch of this um, fat rope and, and use it that way. So I don't feel like messing around right now. Get a big ol' fire going with that. I'll throw my shavings on, I'll throw my, my big pieces on and call it good. doesn't want to work. There we go. <sighs> Plus these pieces underneath it, these like half burn pieces, will start to ignite and char up and add to the fire. It's all icy around here where the fire was warming. Ah. Oh, it's so cold. He must not like me. He's gone. Uh, I was just coming. Starting to get light. I was hoping to get a nice sunrise.
already ate one. This is my second. These oatmeal packets are old. They've been in my food pack for a long time. So there's holes in the bottom. So doing the oatmeal method this way is <laughs> not the uh, most convenient, but that's all right. A little oatmeal on your hand in the morning never hurt no one. Okay. That's good. It's a good amount of water in that one. No sunrise, unfortunately. Sometimes in the winter you'll get these really nice ones. Everything just kind of glows. But that's all right. There will be more winter camps this year. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a little hot still. I love putting hot water from my um, oatmeal, like the extra, on my hands in the morning. It makes it just feel clean and feel, uh, I don't know, it feels good. But it's a little, little, still too hot. I'll wait a little bit. <sighs> Feels good getting that first oatmeal packet in me. I was so hungry. Oatmeal cheers. Alright, it's about time to pack up now. I just want to warm my hands up. I'm glad I have this fire going. As I'm packing up, because packing my sleeping bag into the, its uh, container and all touching all that cold nylon really, really gets your hands cold. So it's nice to have this little warming fire here going as I'm doing that, so I can just kind of warm my hands up every now and then. So I think that's what I'm going to do now. Just break down camp and get on out of here. This isn't going to go back in half as neat as it, <laughs> as it was packed coming here. <laughs> isn't that always the case? It definitely is for me. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Not in my opinion. Get in here! Are you too good for your home? Okay, just enough room to put my canteen. Okay, make sure I don't have any stragglers, stragglers even left around. Look, you can see this is where I slept. Here, I'll, I'll move the move the camera so you can actually see. So you can see where I slept. Right here, it's all melted down, uneven as heck. But for the most part, it was pretty decent. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. You can really see my footprint there. My, my sleeping footprint and then my fire footprint. But other than that, a couple little pieces of wood. Nothing left. It's got this really weird locking system. If, anybody ever, if anybody's interested in this backpack, MCQ Bushcraft on YouTube. I'm sure you should all know who he is. He uh, he did a bunch of mods on his. He made it actually pretty cool. I'm not uh, I'm not that mod kind of guy. Just personally, I don't really care too much. But it is very cool and you can really trick things things out. He's sewn pockets on the sides and everything, which is awesome. He's a real handy handy kind of guy. If you haven't checked him out, I highly suggest watching his stuff. MCQ Bushcraft on the YouTubes. Good guy, too, from the UK. Okay. So this uh, strapping system on this is it's pretty cool. It's not the most convenient, but it doesn't always have to be about convenience. 
Okay, so that's everything there. Oh, no. My sleeping bag. I had a sleeping bag, right? So, like I said before yesterday, carrying things on the top of my pack is all new to me. But it's not that bad. I didn't feel overly um, top heavy or awkward. Just have to take into account how tall you are when you're walking under snowy branches. <laughs> all right, that's all she wrote, boys and girls. My old trusty pair of snowshoes. I've had these for 10 years. Bought them in 2007 in Huntsville when I lived there. They're a pair of tubs, but they are like the higher end brand than you would get at like the Walmart and stuff like that, I believe. Higher end model of the brand. Super fast binding system. I've never had them slip out on me or anything. The Venture, they're called. The 30, the Venture 30. I was told by an old <laughs> trail maintenance guy up in Sault Ste. Marie that when you're buying your snowshoes, go big. You'd rather have them a bit bigger and get your flotation down and be struggling Kyle style. Okay. <clears throat> I wish this thing had a sternum strap. Again, with the mods. Okay, let's get going. We got about a two hour hike to get out of here. I'll bring you along with me. I'm not gonna put the camera away. There's nowhere to put it. <laughs> I gotta carry it. Oh! The sun is lighting up the trees out there on the lake. We gotta go down and check it out before we leave. We got to. I just gotta get down to the lake now. I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna fall for sure. Uh, pass. Oh! <clears throat> Walking backwards on snowshoes isn't as easy as it sounds. Okay, bust through, bust through, Joe. We can do it. Nice. Oh my god. Goodness. This is beauty. The sun must have peaked away again. It was all lit up. It's still pretty. It's still very pretty. Especially being in the dark for so long. These weren't here on the way in. I believe they're moose tracks. There's no way those are deer tracks. It's a toe, like split toe, like an ungulate, like, like, a, like a moose or a deer, but look at the spacing, the depth, and how, how big they are. It's gotta be a moose, I'd say. Pretty cool. They're fresh too, because they're not all covered in snow from last night. They're going the same way. I'm going, oh, look what I found. Mr. Moose stopped for a pee-pee. It's a small moose. I'm on the trail now. And he's on the trail. You can see how disturbed it is all the way up from him. Yeah, these prints are fresh, man. Tell me those aren't moose prints. You can see the toe, the, the toe drag away. 
the old moose knuckle. I gotta be getting close to the Jeep now. I'm so warm. I'm hoping my power rate isn't fro frozen solid in the car in the Jeep. <laughs> the end is in sight. I can see the old Jeep from here. She's a good looking girl. I'll get with you once I'm in there. Oh, there we are. We're a little foggy too. A little foggy. All right, everything's squared away. I'm ready to go. I had a great time. It was a really fun trip. I'm glad I came and checked out this spot. I think I'll bring the family back here to do a, a family camp in a, in a hot tent um, before the winter is over. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. That helps a lot. Uh, throw me a like. That helps as well. Let's try to get 10,000 likes on this video. That would be fantastic if I could do that. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.